As you know, Sequel Pit is a podcast where four friends, sometimes special guests, review a movie that doesn't have a sequel yet, then have a contest pitching their best ideas for one. Today, <laughs> we're embarking on our most difficult mission yet. Some might say it's impossible. I'm <laughs> team leader for this operation, Drew Toynbee. The team joining me today embody aspects of legendary IMF agent Ethan Hunt. First, bringing the youthful energy of Hunt in his first mission, along with the short hair from missions one, three, and six, it's Andy Henry. Hello. <laughs> Brilliant, youthful energy there. Fun, like, just <laughs> great, great stuff. All right, I'll stop him. Leave me in again. Do that again. <laughs> no, I can't be bothered. No, it, brought, it fit the tone fairly well. Um, up next, the man who is so good at impressions, voices, and huge facial expressions, he's basically a human rubber mask. It's Ross Harmston. Yes, it's me. You. Na, 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 na. I don't know why I started singing that. <laughs> and unfortunately, <laughs> the final agent is missing in action. If he was with us, he would have been bringing the long, luscious hair from missions two and four. Matt Rushton is, miss is missing in action. Your mission, agent, if you choose to accept, is to help to find Matt Tell all your friends how good this podcast is and maybe join the Patreon. Yeah. Yeah. I thought you were playing me to like find Matt. I was like, nah, I'm all right. Yeah, no, he's, <laughs> you know, we can actually take him or leave him. He's a bit rubbish. He's I a little a bit rubbish. Hair, though. If I could take the hairs and be in four, three, and five or whatever it was, I'd, <laughs> I'd do it. So, as you will have seen from the episode title, we have watched Mission Impossible 6, aka Mission Impossible. Fallout, Tom Cruise's sixth movie in his long-running, ever-evolving spy thriller action stunt extravaganza where he lives out his death wish on a global stage. As you probably already know, every single episode before we get the review and the pitches, we do a little synopsis so that if you haven't seen the movie, you know roughly what's going on. So, without further ado, I'm going to light the fuse and give myself 60 seconds to tell you what happens in Mission Impossible Fallout. Oh, you've got to put the theme underneath. I will see. I don't want us to get a copyright strike. Anyway, so... Are you listening to this? <laughs> in, no, no, we're on YouTube now, bro. Like, the, sure, yeah. It, yeah, like yeah. We're, <laughs> we'll get pulled. So... In Mission Impossible 5, rogue MI6 agent Solomon Lane created an international group of ex-government agents to be a private army of murder and a private army of murder and chaos. After Ethan and the gang captured him at the end of that movie, his followers, now called the Apostles, are still out there trying to get a load of plutonium to build nukes to cause more chaos. Ethan and the gang go on the hunt for it, accompanied by Henry Cavill's Justice League ruining moustache in the guise of CIA <laughs> handler assassin Walker. As usual for these movies. There are doubled and triple crosses, crazy stunts, lots of running, and it then turns out that Henry Cavill's CIA assassin is actually anarchist baddie John Lark, who has hired the Apostles to get the plutonium for him in return for setting Solomon Lane free. Ethan and co. track the bombs to the mountains of Kashmir, where, as usual, the baddies are caught or killed and the bombs diffused at the very last second after a real helicopter chase shot practically in IMAX, and Ethan gets closure about his marriage that he had to end after movie three. I feel like that was quite close was to sixty seconds. Yeah, it wasn't that. That was good. Yeah. There was, was I, I hand cash there as well. God, that must be lovely to feel. <laughs> oh, I shouldn't have <laughs> laughed. I shouldn't have encouraged that. Awful, awful. Hey, I got to make up for the coughing at the start. <laughs> <laughs> so, chaps, let's do our feelings on this movie and our scores out of five. I actually, I'm gonna. I'm going to chuck it over to Andy first. Oh, I thought you were going to take the lead. Actually, I'm going to go for it first. I, I, I was, yeah. and then I changed my mind. Oh, <laughs> okay. Um, I love this movie. Um, not a massive... Not, I don't know. Not, I'm, I'm, to say I'm a not a massive fan of the franchise is wrong, because I don't like not like it or you know, watch them when they don't come out. Um, I just don't continuously watch them. My favourite definitely is three um but i think four was a bit meh and five was pretty good but yeah this one's really good i feel it was a um, kind of good just nice summer blockbuster which i'm pretty sure it would have come out around then uh where you can 
turn your mind off and uh you know it I'll, some of it's realistic mostly because they kind of set up the how realistic in quotes it is in previous movies like the masks and, and stuff <laughs> like that um but yeah, just enjoyable. Again, it's, I think it's a bit like the Fast Furious, uh, Fast and Furious, is where they're just like, let's go. How can we go bigger? How can we basically try and kill Tom Cruise? <laughs> um, where in Fast, if like if if but the Fast franchise did a stunt like this, it would be like mental and stuff. But yet Tom Cruise does it, and it's like somehow grounded or like realistic. Um, well, I, I think that's possibly because Tom Cruise is actually doing it for real. Where yeah, yeah, in Fast yeah. PG. yeah, yeah, that's probably why. God damn, that man is <laughs> mental. Um, but no, I, I, I liked it. I, I'm going to give it uh, four uh, arm cocks out of five. Hey. Yeah. Because that was such a great like thing that came out. There's two things from this movie that I remember. It's the award-winning mustache, not the ruining mustache. That mustache <laughs> is glorious. Um, the mustache, I'm, I'm, I no, no shade on the quality of the mustache itself, mm. which is absolutely. And, and it magnetic. wasn't the only thing that ruined Justice League. But, it wasn't, uh, but it didn't help. God, we need to do Justice League. That'd be an interesting one. Mm. Um, yeah, the two things: the mustache and the arm cocks, which I I watched about five times, skipping it and doing my own under each time. <laughs> okay, Ross, how about you, mate? Well, I have gone on a journey over this last two weeks. <laughs> I've watched all of the six films in a row. I uh, subscribed to Paramount Plus and I watched every single one. So I am... We're not even, mission... we're not even sponsored by Paramount Plus this episode. No, no. <laughs> Maybe we'll uh, reach out. I am, uh, yeah, Mission Impossible in uh, out. Um, you start no, how you but, feeling doing like that cruise that and stuff. And stuff. Got, I've I, watched him so much. Yeah, yeah. I think, <laughs> like, for me, like, actually, this one was is quite enjoyable. Like, it, maybe because it was, like, the last one that I've had in my series of watching. But, like, I don't know. The the action scenes were really memorable. Um, there's little bits from each of the movies that I really enjoy. Um, this one, I felt the story got a bit complicated in 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 the middle of it um which i it lost me a little bit mm. um but in terms of like in terms of tom cruise the action and the stunts and the soundtrack by lorne balf yeah yeah lorne balf uh all really good and it's it's in, impressive that they've kept this franchise going as long as they have um so yeah like i think it's a good movie it's fun and enjoyable um and it's created lots of memes of you know uh of <laughs> tom cruise running around running up, up <laughs> from things running to things uh hanging off things <laughs> yeah breaking his ankle yeah so i'm gonna give it what did you give it andy i gave it four yeah i'll probably meet you and say four broken ankles out of five. All right. And leaving a little, a couple of little gaps here, just in case we can get something from Matt. Oh, away on his mission. Oh my God, maybe. Yeah. Mi no, missing in action. He's not oh, on a right. mission. Okay. He's... Well, maybe he's on a mission and he's just like. He's gone AWOL. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So for me, this is what I love about the Mission Impossible franchise is how it's how it effectively has has it's kind of got two eras, and there's one and two where they were like, oh, let's do one. We're going to make a, a spy thriller based on a TV show, and this guy Tom Cruise is going to be in it, and it's it's a good yeah. movie. And then John Woo was like. I'm going to make one. I'm going to put doves and slow-mo in it. And he's going to have long hair and there'll be motorbikes and, <laughs> and slow motion again. And Tandy Wayne Newton and, and just craziness. And well, the that, movie, that, that which is, I, sorry. Oh, I was no, just no, going to say that watching, rewatching the second one, that is problematic with Tandy Newton's character just being <laughs> pimped out to seduce <laughs> the bad guy. Anyway, carry oh, on. yeah. Um, yeah, hasn't aged well. And then 
there was quite a big gap and then JJ Abrams comes along and is like, Oh yeah, now it's another one, but he's getting married and he's actually like he's not gonna be a womanizer like James Bond who has a different woman in every movie. He's he's gonna settle down. And then three, four, five, and six, and I presume maybe seven part one and seven part two have all had this through line of like him having this marriage and it going and how he deals with that and and she just keep she pops up in all the movies and gets referenced and in the meantime like brad bird comes on and directs four and he's hanging off the Burj Khalifa, and tom cruise has turned it into this vehicle for himself to be able to be like well i love doing things like this i might as well get paid loads of money to do crazy stuff and mm. seeing as i'm paying for these movies no one the i can tell the insurance companies to fuck off <laughs> yeah yeah and it's just it's great the like the helicopter chase at the end of this movie is absolutely spectacular oh, henry cavill is God, so yeah. great and the in bathroom, this movie and the bathroom fight oh yeah the bathroom fight's absolutely spectacular yeah, yeah. um you've got simon pegg just again taking this character that showed up in 3 as mm the the schlubby the comic relief yeah. who's still a bit of comic relief but he's really developed through these movies you've got um luther's back you've got uh ilsa faust you've got rebecca ferguson's character having an arc across multiple movies it's just and it's it's got an emotional through line now as well that has resonance and i think this is right up there with three like yeah. jointly i think that this and three are really really good all of the mission movies for me none of them if, if we could only score one two three four or five this would be a five but because we've given ourselves a 500 point scale that we that we allow ourselves <laughs> to score on there's always been just something just the tiniest thing missing and i can't even put my finger on it so for me i'm going 4.9 wow, yeah. uh, 4.9 unfortunate laptop face smashes in a bathroom out of 5 <laughs> um, and I love re-watching this film when you realise that actually that was it, that was a calculated move mm. he's, and just yeah just fantastic it, the more you watch this film I have to agree with you Ross like the first time I watched it I didn't get that he wasn't an apostle. I was just yeah. like, oh, he's just one of his dudes. And then it's like, oh, no, actually, he's not. He's just another baddie who's working with them, but they're separate entities for no real reason. Yeah. Um, and it does, second time through, it does kind of make a little bit more sense. But that means that without a Matthews score, Mission Impossible Fallout comes in for us at 4.3 out of five nice nice yeah definitely up there definitely up there absolutely so for those of you who are our pitch pals on patreon you can hop over to the exclusive feed and hear our full thoughts on this movie and if you would like to hear us talk much more in depth about this movie and the mission franchise in general then please head over to our Patreon and see if you fancy chipping us a couple of quid a month to listen to us talk about movies even more. But if you're not going to, that's completely fine. We're here for you for free, always, forever. And for you guys, we are going to get these sequels pitched. Here we are for the pitches, the head-to-head -head battle. Andy and Ross going at it hard. I don't know why that... You're both in vests on we're camera. Soft, are we? <laughs> no, we all look hot and sweaty. Yeah. It's getting raunchy. Um, so, with, obviously, Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning Part 1 on the horizon, I want to know what you guys would do with your sequels to Mission Impossible 6 before we go and see what the studio have done. If you've not listened to the show before, the rules for the pitches are very simple. Andy and Ross will individually... Tell me their pitches. I might have questions for them. I might not. They will do so uninterrupted, at which point I will set them loose on each other to absolutely berate each other into the ground and explain why they should win and the other one should lose. I will then 
choose my favorite or the winner or however we arbitrarily decide to have me <laughs> choose this week. And then the winner will choose next week's movie. So without further ado, I would like to begin with Ross. Mine is called Mission Impossible 7, Singularity. Mm. Okay. Ethan and his team embark on a high-stakes mission in Monte Carlo to port a deal between the Apostles and Russian slash anyone who is a bad person, <laughs> they not uh, <laughs> arms dealer. After the mission fails, Ethan and the crew uncover a much bigger plot involving the kidnapping and... Uh, the kidnapping of hackers and programmers, all led by someone Ethan knows. Ooh, oh. Okay. We open the movie, and Ethan and the team are in Monte Carlo. We learn through dialogue they're on a mission to stop a deal going down with the Apostles and a Russian's arm dealer, and the, the exchange of some high-valued information at a party. Ethan and the gang start to infiltrate, which goes as following. Ethan infiltrates the party with forged documents that Benji has created, he will then take on a persona of the wealthy art dealer known as Alexander Drake. When inside, Ethan will gather surveillance. However, something goes wrong and Ethan has to get rid of his disguise. Maybe the mask fucks up or something. But <laughs> he tells them that hopefully they've never met and that he can get away with it as himself. Changing the form of him being lucky, he infiltrates the meeting and is immediately spotted and shot at. <laughs> <laughs> the member of the Apostles and his goons um, grab the memory stick that was going to be traded and escape. In the fray of far fire, the arms dealer is killed and Ethan uh, then has to improvise, fighting his way out of the party. Insert opening chase scene through the city of Monte Carlo, through casinos and the streets, eventually ending in a car chase. They end up both crashing and Ethan and the Apostles are both in the cars. They're injured, but the Apostles get out. Um, then, uh, Ethan is in, uh, Ethan gets out as well and is about to go over and retrieve the, uh, the memory stick. However, he's shot in the collarbone, uh, and the mysterious figure you can't see cause their head is covered with a balaclava or something then approaches, uh, the apostles car and then they shoot, uh, the apostles and grab the memory stick and then, they as they approach Ethan, he blacks out, and then maybe we can have the opening. Do 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 do. Um, uh, maybe there's like a trail of like petrol, and she lights it, and that's what the <laughs> the the trail is. Uh, okay. He wakes up in a hospital. All the gang are there, including Jeremy Renner. Yay! They Yay! say the mission was a failure. Um, and whatever information was on that disc is important to the apostles. After, uh, like, a month, Ethan is out of the hospital. He rings up Jeremy Renner and goes, all right. Uh, he tells him that there's been a new development um, and what happened in Monte Carlo, uh, and they need he needs to head to the city library in whatever city he's in, I don't know. Ethan heads there and talks to the receptionist and gives him a code to which the librarian gives him the location of a specific book in the library. He finds it. It scans his face to reveal a secret message. Yeah. Uh, oh, uh, it says, hello, Ethan. Hope you're feeling better. That tra that trade you tried to stop in Monte Carlo, even though it failed. We've been working with the CIA and the uh, MI5. Uh, sorry, I should do American. The CIA and the MI5 and learned that the hackers and programmers from around the world have gone missing. And that to tip it off, the next person to go, uh, they got a tip off that the next person to go missing is a hacker known as Cypher who lives in Tokyo. Your mission, should you choose to accept it, is to find Cypher, let him be captured, and follow where the trail leads. We have assembled the same team as usual. Uh, this message will self-destruct in five minutes. Bye. Five, not even five, five seconds, five minutes. <laughs> yeah. Pat out that time. Uh, so Ethan and the crew heads Tokyo into uh, in their head... Uh, and then in their headquarters, Benji is able to trace some of his work that he's done on the internet. So, you know, he's a hacker, so he's probably done some stuff where he's, like, left his IP address. Mm. Um, so they head to the house uh, where the IP address comes from. They break in. They find Kei Hu Kwan. 
Yeah. Yeah. I think that's how you say his name. Kei Hu Kwang. Uh, on his computer. Then the apostles, uh, goons, attack him. They break in. They burst in. Insert 20-minute chase sequence around Tokyo as well. Oh There's leaping from building to building, hanging from those neon signs, all with the humor of Kei Yun Kwan um, uh, and Tom Cruise as well. Um, another chase sequence, and they end up at the Noko, Nokogiriyama Ropeway, which is a cable car that leads up to the mountains from Tokyo. Nice. Um, Ethan and Cypher get on, but then a mysterious figure gets on as well. They The fight leads them to the top of the cable car, and they're on top, and they're like halfway along the cable car at the moment, like on the wire. Um, the fight happens, and there's a massive fight, and the mysterious figure gets their mask removed with a punch or something and it's revealed to be Naya Nordoff Hall Thandy Newton's character from the second movie <laughs> whoa Very we nice. learned can through I, the and I issue a, a correction she does now go by Tandy way okay Tandy way thank you thank you um we learned that um through the bad guy speech that she was assassinated through knowing Ethan and um she didn't actually die, but clung to life and vowed revenge on the man that left her and moved on. So she worked her way up and is now head of the apostles. Oh, shit. Ooh. She said that she will use Cypher to truly create great suffering. Um, she takes Cypher and leaps off the cable car and pulls a chute, but not before pressing a button, which makes the whole cable car start to fall. So insert... Tom Cruise's real stunt of him zip lining along the cable car. Yeah. Ethan knows it's now uh, that Naya. Like, that was like the musical equivalent of when they get a picture of Gandalf and it's like, make it, make it so Vader. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Ethan knows it's Naya, so that's responsible, and needs answers, so heads to London to get answers from Lang. Uh, but he's in a highly secure facility in MI5 in London. Insert infiltration mission number two. Lots of wacky ways they have to get in uh, on this one, but I'm running out of time, so whatever you want, Drew, I can put in. Uh, but it starts with them infiltrating them, like infiltrating through the Thames, like going under, under the water. Uh, they get to Lang, they question him, it reveals that uh, that his idea was one of only many. The overall plan is grow is to use uh, growing technology. Before he can say what, there's a huge explosion and he's killed by Naya. Insert another ten minute car chase. Well, a chase scene around London. But Ethan manages to overcome Naya, but can't kill her because of the love he still has for her. So she escapes. The rest of the gang are like, "Why did you let her go?" And he says, "I didn't." and reveals he put a tracker on her. They track her to Iceland, and then find that she has a hidden base beneath the Goldfuss water tower, uh, waterfall. Uh, mm. so, in, so, insert infiltration number three. This is where we learn uh, that she's been using the smartest hackers and technology scientists to create an artificial intelligence called Cerberus that will cause mass panic across the world uh, because as everything runs on technology now, this uh, will be done with uh, whilst Ethan like sneaks around, you know, puts on the faces and stuff through the base. And then when uh, also Naya can explain it when she's getting Cypher, uh, forcing him to do the work on the program mm -hmm. as well. So Ethan gets to the final boss. They have a fight. Uh, the AI is about to be uploaded to every satellite in the world. It's like 99% complete but benji manages to stop it with the help of cypher uh, ethan ends up chasing naya and they end up overlooking the waterfall naya screams i love you and you let me die ah oh, then you then you didn't think about me again you moved on to save someone else causing more pain and suffering along the way so now i'm going to do the same i'm going to cause everyone the same suffering that you caused to everyone in your wake but Ethan kicks her in the waterfall and she's dead. Um, <laughs> or so you think. Benji says, we did it. Yay. Ethan replies, no, we've just stopped the plot. But once you cut the head off the snake, doesn't another grow? Question mark. End of the movie. 
post credit scene. Naya is alive. Oh, shit. She's still alive. <laughs> uh, she survived the waterfall. And then it says at the end, Tom Cruise will... Um, uh, Tom Cruise will return. Tom Cruise in Mission... will return. <laughs> yeah. He's not even Ethan Hunt anymore. <laughs> yeah. no, Tom, Tom Cruise, Cruise will return in Mission Impossible, Euroboros. Ooh. Okay. That's it. Um, I have two questions. Go for it. Question one. The book in the library, when it self-destructs, what is its method of self-destruction? Uh... Well, it's just a puff of smoke like the other ones. It's not it's not that great. It's because Okay. I was hoping that you were gonna say that because it's in a it library sets on you fire. Don't, yeah, you don't want fire because then it will be so <laughs> I was hoping it was gonna shred itself, but there we go. Um, okay, yeah, no, it shreds itself. Yeah, it takes like, five minutes. It, Maybe it walks itself to the bin or something. In, <laughs> inside it's got a black hole, uh, dark matter, <laughs> and it just envelops itself into the dark hole. I love it. The... <laughs> um the only other thing that I would like to raise is not 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 much in the way of gadget free in this one. Or are you seeing that happening in all the infiltration stuff? Yeah, I think like obviously I I couldn't think of anything that they haven't done already. But I, like I want it to be similar to those ones, in all those those three different infiltration missions to have different unique things, whether that be. Uh, yeah, like, I, I don't know, like, because I really like the, even though it's fucking stupid, I like the one in, I think it's Rogue Nation, where he, they do that corridor scene, and it's the camera mm. that oh, has no, that's, a different... That's yeah, that's, that's great and stupid. I mean, it's stupid. It's not stupid. I mean, it's stupid. It's good. Uh, yeah, like, I mean, it's not stupid, but I mean, it is, like, it was cool, like, <laughs> um, and then obviously, yeah, so stuff like that, I would, like, obviously cool. I didn't put it in my pitch, but I would hope that the writers would put more stuff in that they could do for those infiltration bits. Excellent. Very well done. Very well done. Mm. I shall move on to Andy Henry. All right. All right. Here we go. My Mission Impossible 7 is called Mission, and then in quotations, impossible. Because we know it's not. Um, <laughs> or you've got Mission Impossible, see which stunt kills Tom Cruise. That will be how I advertise it. Like Tom Cruise killed the dies in this movie. Come see what, how. Um, why was six afraid of seven? Because Mission Impossible seven, eight, nine. Yeah. And now the real one, please. <laughs> um, but my, uh, my actual one would be called Mission Impossible seven final judgment, because I would be uh, advertising this as the final of the franchise. Okay. All right. Uh, so Ethan and his team are hunting down a terrorist uh, that's planning attack. Uh, you know, typical MIF. M M. Oh God, I was going to do the sofa sale thing then. I M I F. No, what's it called? I M D F S. D F S. That's the fucking thing. I M F. I M F. Um, the the, so, the um, fucking official. There is an actual spy agency that is called the Impossible Impossible yeah, Mission Impossible Force. Mission I hate Force. it so much. Anyway, right? Sorry, sorry. That was established okay. in three as well, wasn't it? That's the only bad oh, thing. Oh yes. Yeah. Anyway, so uh, Ethan and his team are hunting down a terrorist. They bring uh, the man in. Uh, they, they, you know, big action fight. Um, they bring him in uh, and try and get information from him. Um, they're at the uh, M uh, IMF headquarters, and suddenly. All the computers get attacked. The lights start going, like you know, on and off, and then the sirens start going, and then goons enter from every door and start killing people, start blasting everyone. Um, you know, Hunt and his team, uh, which basically will be Luther and Benji in this movie, um, and some other people fire back uh, and either kill all the goons or the goons flee. Uh, but basically, there's only like a few people left in the Im Impossible Mission Force. Um, so Hunt and Luther and Benji investigate evidence, kind of um, uh, uh, who, what's going on, who were the these goons were, um, and how they're connected to the terrorists because the terrorists got uh, cap uh, got taken and you know uh, escaped. Forgot to mention that. Sorry, ter terrorists escaped. <laughs> um, so they they find clues uh, which takes them to Brazil. They fly over to Brazil uh, and find the terrorists hanging out in like the VIP section of a club, speaking of a good old um, fight in a club. Um, he beat a uh, hunt, kind of uh, enters, finds the goons, beats them up, uh, and then um, has a conversation with this, uh, this terrorist. And the terrorist kind of says he's just a small cog in a much bigger operation uh, or op machine, probably would have been a better metaphor. Um, one of Ethan's past enemies is back and he's planning to do something that will cause the world to just implode in itself. Everything's going to cause chaos. It's basically the end of the world. 
Um, uh, and the uh, they have a little fight. Uh, the Chavis tries to run, but gets pinned down by Tom Cruise, and he's like, oh, who, who's coming? To, who's coming to do this?" Um, and it's uh, the the terrorist goes, "It's oh shit, I've got his, I, I didn't get his last name. It's it's um, Owen Dave. No, it's Owen no, Wilson. The guy from three. No, the guy from three. Davian. Owen, Owen Davian. Davian. That's it. It's Owen Davian. And Cruise is like, "What the fuck?" So back at IMF headquarters, uh, Hunt tells his team that Owen died at the end of Mission Impossible 3. What's going on? But uh, it doesn't mean like someone someone could be using his name, you know, as an alias, could be something else, just could be tricks. Uh, also, you know, in superhero terms, we never saw the body, maybe could be alive. Also, the technology these days got fucking masks that could be anyone. Who knows? He could be somehow, somehow alive. Um, so Cruz starts start to get a bit paranoid. Uh, they go back looking for like clues and stuff, uh, which takes them to Mexico. Um, uh, and I'll just mention, sorry, one of the people that's left in the IMF after everyone's basically been killed is Declan Gromley from the third one, the guy who's in the Tudors, you know, the uh, Irish oh, guy. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, yeah. So he's kind of hanging back now. He's kind of like a techie guy more now. So he's kind of big. He's like the guy in the chair at IMF. Um, so uh, Hunt and his team says to him, basically, we're going to go. To Mexico because that's where we think uh, all these clues are la- uh, uh, leading us. So they fly to Mexico in like a, a, a private plane, uh, but on the way their plane gets shot out by two enemy planes, and they're like, "Who the hell are these people?" But we don't know. They're not like official like Mexican like army or anything like that. Uh, we have a great fucking like stunt uh, fight where uh, Hunt flies the planes, manages to destroy them, uh, and went down. And everyone's fucking uh, you know him, Luther, and Benji's all freaking out. But uh, Hunt manages to fucking like crash it into the ocean safely, uh, and then they kind of like swim over to to Mexico. They're not too far away. Um, they go, they try and find clues in Mexico, but like they don't find anything. They call Declan back at IMF and they say um, uh, they they haven't found any clues. But then uh, they get they coincidences. Maybe they go into a bar. They find an own, uh, but they think they think they found an old associate that could be working for Owen. Um, uh, and there are more clues and stuff, and then they go to Sweden to ask this person clues. Uh, when they get there, they, re- they realize this informant uh, is Owen uh, Dav- Davian's daughter, mm-hmm. uh, Helena. Um, and Helena's just like, what are you doing here? What the fuck? She's basically got nothing to do with her father's business. She's a good, you know, a quote-unquote good girl. Um, so she says, um, you know, uh, she tries to plead her innocence to Hunt. Hunt's like, I believe you. I actually think you've got nothing to do with him, but we've been sent here for some reason. Suddenly, goons raid the place, uh, start firing, start killing the daughter. Hunt, Hunt obviously goons. takes the daughter. Goons, always <laughs> goons. Hunt takes Helena, um, uh, kind of like protects her. They flee onto a motorbike, obviously, um, and they're followed by goons on motorbikes, obviously. And then we have an awesome cut to an awesome <laughs> 10 minute fight scene on motorbikes where Tom Cruise is basically fighting on a motorbike. Maybe he jumps to another motorbike. Uh, but he's he's trying to protect this daughter because he thinks he knows she knows something or you know. Um, they manage to escape, get on another plane, plane just in time, uh, and they start questioning the daughter. Uh, the daughter tells uh, admits that her father is alive and is hiding in like a top floor apartment in, in Germany. She kind of like doesn't say father so much. She just kind of says like he is alive or something like that. So they tell uh, Declan at IMF they got to fly to Germany. Uh, they get into the building uh, and into the building. Uh, they see security people basically and the security people are just like maybe they got disguises they're cleaning through let's say that so the security are like okay cool they buzz them up in the helicopter in the helicopter in the elevator as soon as the elevator's doors close the security people go back to their desk start bringing out little bombs and start planting them on the base of this building when uh, Hunt uh, exits the elevator looks around for clues um, he can't find any clues suddenly the building starts to fucking blow crumble uh, Hunt and his team have to like basically jump and climb from like the top floor of like a 80 foot building all the way to the bottom before it stops. Um, and he obviously they don't die, but it looks fucking incredible. Uh, so they get back to IMF headquarters and Hunter's team's really pissed off. And they're just like, we can't find anything. What the fuck is going on? Um, and uh, Hunt's over by maybe like by the window, kind of stroking his chin. And then he finally realizes what's going on. He turns around and he says, Declan, it's almost like we've been hunting a ghost. Declan kind of like, smiles and maybe laughs a little bit and says listen hunt you don't know what's happened a lot that's what i should have mentioned as well this is like five years maybe after the first, after the after six uh so he's like you don't know what's happened um but before he can finish his sentence he gets shot ah oh, he's dead and uh, who enters but solomon lane and he's broken <laughs> out of uh, uh of um 
uh, where was he? He wasn't MI6. Was oh, it was he? MI6. Yeah, MI6, they gave him the, back to MI6. 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 Yeah, yeah, yeah. So basically, he's broke out and he tells uh, Hunt basically that over the last couple of years he's been corrupting, infiltrating the IMF and basically slowly turning it back. Well, it's not back, but slowly turning it into the syndicate. Uh, and everyone, he's been corrupting uh, all the officials. Any officials that basically wouldn't turn were killed in the opening raid. That's why the opening raid happened, basically, to kill everyone. So the only people that were left uh, with that were IMF workers, were actually are actually now syndicate workers. Uh, so the big, uh, mm -hmm. uh, big fight, uh, guns come in, uh, guns, sorry, not, uh, goons come in. Um, <laughs> a um, big gun. Yeah, so yeah. In. Hey? Sorry, I said a big gun. A big gun, in. that's it. Um, so yeah, they all they all try and fight. They get pinned down. Hunt gets micro trip uh, with this like brain ultra altering brain chemistry altering micro trip that makes him basically extremely suggestible. Uh, that Solomon and his team and basically the syndicate have, have come up, and their plan is to in, is somehow do uh, implant it into the world. Uh, I was kind of thinking like Google Glass again, but it might be uh, too much like Tron Legacy. But they they want to basically control the world with this like microchip or some sort of like mind control kind of thing. Um, Luther and Benji on the floor being pinned. They're like, no, oh, Hunt, you know, fight it, fight it. But Hunt gets up, turns around and basically now is evil. Um, Lane to, uh, Solomon tells him to start planning for this new attack and starts running him through stuff. Luther like kind of coughs up blood because he's dying and he's being beaten up and stuff. And he's like, Ethan, no, you're good. Come on, do it. And Ethan picks up a gun and shoots Luther dead. He uh, uh, he then picks up. Uh, he no. doesn't pick up again the gun, but he then shoots Benji, dead. And um, goons take them out uh, and dispose of them. Uh, uh, Solomon basically says to Hunt, "Go do this attack." Hunt like nods. He's now part of the syndicate, and we end the film uh, thinking Hunt is now evil and part of the syndicate. But then there's the after credit scene that Benji is actually alive, so it's not the end of the franchise. Okay. Okay, thank you. Um, Read the last bit as well. Hmm? Read the last bit, the last line about Cavill. Oh no, that was just one of my notes from the from that was one of my notes from the <laughs> just six. Says, one of my favorite bits is Henry Cavill getting sprayed with hot oil at the end because he's like, oh, he's <laughs> <laughs> okay, sorry, carry on. <laughs> okay, um, all right. So, Andy, you mm. said that this would be marketed as the final movie. Mm -hmm. So that's why... But it's not. Yes. And that's why it's called <laughs> Final Judgment. The, final, the other one would be called like Final Judgment 2. No, but like I would do the kind of the Hollywood secret where basically we suggest there's, no gonna, there's not going to be any more. Where, you know, Tom Cruise is like, oh, I'm not planning to make any more and stuff like that. And the whole feeling of this end of the film is it's the end of the franchise and stuff. And that's when you're like, oh, when like they, when Benji and like Luther get shot and like killed um which maybe could like uh, other drafts had them dying in act one and act two and stuff um but yeah this is like the whole idea was like oh it's the end of the franchise luther and benji's gonna die but hunt's gonna not turn evil and survive and, and be fine but then it doesn't and it ends like a like thanos's snap okay all right my other question before we move on is if if Lane has already infiltrated the IMF to such a degree that he can have this much control over where Tom Cruise goes and or where Ethan and the team go and setting up all of these traps, why does he need to send Ethan all over the world and into all of these traps? He, uh, like, yeah, I didn't go much into that. He was just kind of like clearing out. He was trying to get all any any other like his final bit of the plan into into IMF. Um, yeah, admittedly, yeah, I didn't kind of go into that much of that because I was running out of room. But yeah, he just like he the, like the final purge was killing everyone at the start. That all the people that wouldn't turn to his side. Um, and then I don't want to say he was just bringing his stuff in, but basically, yeah, he was just doing this like his like final bit. He needed Ethan out of the like country because he would have just been like been too aware of what's going on to come back and, and stop it all right okay. um so he just it's just, yeah it's just like his final bits of his of his plan um, right cool get, no, his, get his office set up and stuff like that that's good that makes sense i like that okay okay thank you chaps so just before we get into the debate the it some interesting parallels some interesting parallels 
we had Ross's Mission Impossible Singularity, wherein Ethan and gang encounter an a, encounter a character from a previous movie uh, who has turned to villainy. This time being Tandiwe Newton's Naya Nordo Hall, uh, who is wrangling the members of the syndicate to create a world-ending AI, and it ends on a on a cliffhanger. And we have Andy's Mission Impossible Final Judgment, where Ethan and the gang travel around the world because a character from a previous movie has ostensibly come back. Um, although he has, it's actually the Irish guy from Mission Impossible 3, but we think it's Owen Davian and then it's not. And then it turns out Solomon Lane has cleaned out IMF, taken it over for his own nefarious means, and has switched everyone to his side, including Dun 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 Ethan. Oh, I didn't do my, my little blurb, so I do it now. Stunts, action, <laughs> mystery, <laughs> running, pew pew bang bang. That was it. <laughs> Marvelous. Um okay. Okay, right. I I want you guys now to pit yourselves against one another mm -hmm. and explain to me why I should be choosing your movie and not Tub. Pick mine because mine's easily marketable and not saying that it's the final one and then killing <laughs> fucking Benji and uh, no, the Benji's other guy. Alive. Luther. Yeah, what Luther's... about what Luther? He's dead. Yeah, he's fine. You didn't can, say we, that. We can, your yeah, bitch. but that's you the thing. We need an emotional. Benji. We need at least one of them to like to die to be an emotional thing. When Ethan actually turns good again in the eighth, we need an actual like emotional court eye reason and stuff like that. If they both live, or if just one of them, if just Benji got shot, but he lived at the end, and then it, there'd be nothing. But no, what? he needs to come back. At, he needs to come back in eight and be like, "Oh fuck!" I'd be like, "I killed one of my friends." Oh. So what's Lane's motivation in this movie? He wants to get hold of, he wants to basically get all the um, IMF uh, resources. Uh, so he, can... he doesn't need that. He's got literally like millions of dollars using this yeah, but... syndicate and the. And the yeah, but you know, he's, he's also taken out, out of the question, like IMF. So if he can be like, if he can take him over and get him out of the question, two for one. Well, so it's nothing to do with Ethan Hunt. Which was literally yeah, his yeah, because he wants Ethan. To, he wants Ethan to work for him. That's like that, yeah, and that's why he, he said he, in he said in, in the in number six he was literally like, I want to make you suffer, mm. like and, and he's going to wanna... suffer by being mind controlled to do bad things because Ethan Hunt likes to do good things. <laughs> when did he learn this technology to do mind control? Hmm? And well, why it's just didn't a microchip. It? We've had we've had plenty of things in this franchise. Yeah, no, no, we can, I'm we not can, we can believe this. No, no, yeah, I'm not denying that. I'm just asking you when this technology got over the last, made like oh well, i don't know over the, it could be over the last five years when he was in between the movies he could have been having okay. he could have been, right, cool. uh, been having it you know 10 years between you know before well, the other i'm movies. just saying like he could have just used this years ago it wasn't ready before it was in tech before it was an r d now it's ready <laughs> and maybe um, maybe this maybe maybe this is the uh maybe the one implanted into cruise is the uh uh the first or something so it's like a beta one it's a tester so but then that's love... why he breaks out in the in the eight. That's how he breaks out. I had other reasons of how and stuff. I also but... love in Andes, it's just I go to a country, I look for clues. Don't know what these clues are. It sends me to this country. It's it's a clue. Yeah, but that comes out in the writing. Mine is purposely <laughs> supposed to be like a really it's supposed to be a wild goose chase, but it's not you don't see that as the audience member. So you can have things that are like, oh, this is gonna maybe bring back someone else or anything like that. And that's gonna be bring up in the script. I don't want to go too much into that. It's basically oh, yeah, they go, yeah. Oh, we We've kind of got a clue about this guy who should be dead, and that's and Tom Cruise is paranoid, so he's he's got to have to explore it, and that clue takes him to like another one. He's like, well, you know, and then. Okay, cool. <laughs> Go on then, <laughs> pick mine then. What do you think? Well, I don't know. Mine's just better. Mine's just more interesting. Mine, mine just keeps you guessing. Ross is just as a bit. Ross, yeah, 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 yours, yours is about a memory. Yours is like about I don't know. You got you got a memory stick. Yeah, that goes missing, and then the second person. Uh, uh, not Tandy Newman. I can't remember how she likes to be called now. What is it, Rick? Tandy Way. Tandy Way Newman comes back, and you're like, cool. Um, out of everyone in the franchise, you could have brought back. I'm not too sure why her. Um, but yeah, no, I mean, like, yeah, Ross, Ross is 
Ross is fine. Because I she's a Ross very been... good actress now, and yeah. why wouldn't I want a strong female yeah, because... villain? Like, just in why terms not? of like, yeah, and just in terms of like, I don't know, better characters. You could I just I like who, Res, like you totally changing yeah. the motivation <laughs> of your bad guy in your one. To, to these like oh I just now even though I spent the entire time in the previous movie trying to fucking kill you with a bomb and now I just want you to work for me because now fucking you know oh, also he's fucking escaped again there we go like oh, yes that's what he does he's, he's he, a slippery he, bastard you know no he's not he's a little dweeb he's a little what dweeb you mean? he's a fucking like head of the syndicate he could kick your ass <laughs> <laughs> no he can't right pick mine Drew because. Mine brings you all the infiltration stuff, all the chase stuff that that uh, become part and parcel with a, a Mission Impossible movie, and I bring a interesting swerve on a villain from Ethan's past um, with Tandiwe Newton. And you should pick mine because I've got great set pieces and action. What uh, set pieces got- have you got? So I've got a fucking crumbling building that Tom Cruise and his team, or just Tom Cruise, I can't just want it to be Tom Cruise, has to like run, like basically almost Spider-Man down there from the 80th level down to like the like 20th or something where they can quote unquote realistically jump out and like survive a jump. Wait, so hold on. How, and a plane crash? Explain, no, wait, hold on. Explain to me. So there, it's falling this way and they're no, running it's along it's, the side. It's, crum- it's like crumbling and bits are like falling apart. How do yeah, but you just said they're running down the side of the building. Yeah, not not not, not physically like down the actual like wall. They're like jumping oh, okay. from like bit of uh debris to like debris or something, and then slightly jumping like running down a wall to jump on another bit, sliding down like a pole that's like floating in the air, so it doesn't actually mean anything. There's a bit of comedy for Tom Cruise. Great save, <laughs> that's it. We got that, and we got the fucking like plane. Tom Cruise has to land a fucking plane, bit of top gun in there. Let's get that. Mine keeps you guessing. As I say, in the script, it will come out that like this wild goose chase won't be seen as a wild goose chase. Um, it's just well, yours is just going from country to country, like going, uh, what is this? Where th- where is this yeah, guy?" In the script, I say in the script it's going to be interesting because in, it will be tied back to say, was splattered other on things the that fucking... in Ethan's past, including oh. the daughter. Other Shouldn't it, like it, surely he'd be like, "Why is this one?" I definitely saw him splattered, like because he literally. We don't know the... that though. As an you audience, we don't look... know that right. he could. Yeah. He literally got right. hit the car and just been dragged across a little bit. Yes, but you see him look uh, like uh, this, this shoe. Yeah. Like he maybe Tom, gets... maybe Ethan Hunt can't do blood. Maybe he's just like ooh. Don't like all that. right. Anyway, all right. So the, the fact, <laughs> right in the weird world that he thinks that the, the this guy wouldn't fucking die. Yeah. Why would he now go? He has after to know though. That's the thing. He doesn't. Years, he doesn't fully he just believe. Came out. What's he been doing for 15 years? Who knows? That's the thing. He needs to find out. He, he doesn't completely know if this is true or not. But in case he is, and this name he knows, he has to go find it out. And, and the so, first clue doesn't exactly say that he doesn't exist. He goes, there's a slight, like, this 5% chance he exists is now up to 10%. It's not zero, so I have to go check it out. And he just keeps going okay. that little bit, that little bit, that little bit, just to keep him going each time. What's, until what, he finally okay. realizes he's been actually question. chasing a ghost. What Go is the it. mission? What is the mission that is impossible in your movie? It's to find well, it's to find the ghost. It's to find it's to find uh Davian. Yeah, because it's actually impossible. That's the thing. Yours is fine. Yours is fine. Mine is just like what you would like from a summer mission impossible blockbuster. Mine's literally got all the things you would require for a Mission Impossible movie. Infiltration. Yeah, it's 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 all right. No, you just don't want to say <laughs> that it's good because you know it's good and you know it's, it's the thing. It's fine. You hit all the beats. There's just nothing in terms of like a seventh movie in this franchise. What are you looking for? You've got the set pieces in mind that you're looking for. You've got this interesting story. This like made like double cross or triple cross of what the fuck's going on here. That it like in the script will come out because it's going to be as I say this little thread that's just being pulled. Ethan's pulling this thread; he can't fucking get rid of it. All right, no mission whatsoever in your. The mission is to find Davian, and then eventually that's not an impossible mission. It is impossible because he doesn't exist. He's not alive. There before this gets violent. (laughs) Um, Very good, chaps. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Okay, so my. My final thoughts. Um, obviously, you've you've both gone with 
older sort of legacy characters, which is I I enjoyed both choices to do that. I was really pleased. I I can't remember the actor's name to see the Irish guy from Mission Impossible Three back. I thought he was great in that one. I think it's a shame that he's not come back. Mm. I I enjoyed the specter of Owen Davian hanging over the film, and because as the franchise's best villain thus far, hands down, that's that mm. is a a very interesting threat. Um, with Ross, I I like that it's it's talking about AI, which is a, a hot button topic at the moment. It's more overt about the syndicate, like with with Andy's the syndicate kind of they show up at the end and it's like, oh but oh it was it was all the syndicate again, but the rest of the movie you haven't thought it was about them. So that if that felt a little bit disjointed. Um I, I've got to admit, Tandy Wynne Newton's heel turn, like, is is Ethan Hunt that monumentally good of a shag that <laughs> that that him him turning her him thinking I mean, she he was pimped dead her has out made her... to he pimped her out to go back to to go he, back to he did, her, her abusive boyfriend. That is true. That is true. That's yeah. pretty evil. <laughs> oh man. Um, okay. All right. I think, I do think there are, there are, oh, there are, there are things going for both, but it's going to Mission Impossible Singularity. It's going oh, to Ross. Yeah. This time around. I think the thing that got it for me, Andy, I can, I can absolutely see your thought process. I, I really like the idea of, like I said, the spectre of Owen Davian and then the rug pull. I can see, I can see a way of it maybe working, but the fact that the syndicate is still out there, but they're not addressed until right at the end. And like, if they were there, if, 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 if the baddies were there shooting everyone that they couldn't turn to their side at the beginning, why didn't they just shoot Ethan? And, and just a couple of other bits niggled at me more than I Ethan's got niggles from room. from Ross. <laughs> <laughs> um, and Ro- Ross, I think it was like you could you could you could tell how much you could tell you'd put loads of work into it as well, and I really appreciated that. So yes, Ross, yeah, congratulations, you have Quit won this bloody podcast. <laughs> You've won for the last like three weeks. You have yeah, given. You've got you're some like good second, wins, aren't you? Uh, I don't know, but I, 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 I only came up with that pitch like an hour before. I guess that was. I'm surprised you got that <laughs> that good, but that's why it was so holy. I guess as well. But um, I was quite <laughs> well, impressed with that. I was a bit like pulling this thread. I was like, "Fuck! I can't, I kind of want to see this movie now." <laughs> well played, Andy. For for an hour before, that is a valiant attempt. And some really good ideas, but yeah, Ross Ross clearly had more t- more thought put into it overall. I have done the scores up to and including this episode, and the scores as they currently stand are in joint first with fifteen points each. It's me and Ross. Oh shit! I'm joint first. Hey, we saw you talking about me always winning. <laughs> one <laughs> first place. <laughs> one point behind with fourteen is Andy. Oh, and yeah, Matt, for you. Matt, <laughs> God bless him, who has had to be absent from a lot of episodes That's since we started the scoring. The point thing in. <laughs> is, he's still on. It? Matt is on twelve points. Yeah. Oh, that's not. Yeah, too he bad. can win. He yeah. can win next week. Yeah, yeah. I think he's back it, next not week. Not next week. So. The next can all episode change. Ross, congratulations! You have won. Please tell us and the listeners what we're doing next. We are going to be doing uh, one of my favorite films of one of my favorite actors, uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger. We are going to do one of his movies from 1993, the American fantasy action comedy film, Last Action Hero. Oh, my God. I'm so excited (laughs) and terrified. Let's get some Arnie back in this podcast. 
Yeah. Oh, God. God. I He's like 70 so up now. I, if you I, guys I don't give it film. five, if you don't give it mm. five, you're Oh, it's definitely gonna be up there. I do. Unless something's changed since the last time I saw it. This is a is a great is a great one. Yeah. I I've never understood why yeah. this movie underrated. Mm. Wildly underrated. I can't uh, yes. So uh, and hopefully Matt will be joining us as well, which would be nice. Yeah. Hopefully, I don't want to say. You will, oh my god! You know, Wait, you're not. you're 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 doing it. I I'm just imagining the poster now because there's Arnie swinging or something, isn't it? Like, isn't he swinging yeah. on a rope for the kid? There's going to be your face. That's going to look. Great. <laughs> 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 That's so there you so go. Good. Fantastic. Okay, well, thank you very much for joining us for another episode of Sequel Pitch. As we've mentioned before, if you really, really do enjoy what we do, the best thing you can do is find someone else who you think would enjoy it too and tell them to listen. That would help us out a great deal. We want more people. We want tons of folks so that we can all be chatting and laughing and having fun about these movies together. If you yeah. really, really like then check out www.patreon.com forward slash sequel pitch, where for £2 a month, if you want to, you do not have to, you can support us. Help us keep the lights on and you get to listen to our full review segments as well. So with that, it is goodbye from admirable runner-up Andy Henry. I'll uncock these guns then. <laughs> <laughs> People at home, I was uncocking my arms, which are another word for guns. <laughs> very, very good, Andy. Very good. It is goodbye from this week's winner, Mr. Ross Harmston. Goodbye, Bond. <laughs> <laughs> and having had my final joke stolen from me deftly with seconds to go I will instead uh, defuse this bomb with one second and say goodbye from me what a terrible outro bye oh, no, this, this episode you were was self-destruct yeah, I thought you were going to say yeah, yeah the self-destruct like, thing the do that. Redo, redo it do okay, that. yeah 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 alright yeah yeah this, this, and this episode is going to self-destruct in five seconds bye <laughs>